Okay, so this is option number two, uh, using Coach Philip, who's based in the UK, uh, for remote coaching. Um, so the way it would work, uh, you go up to uh, Gibson's Community Center, uh, record a game, either use myself or record it yourself. Uh, you take the link, uh, the YouTube link, that you receive uh, from myself or on your own, and you send that to Coach Philip. Uh, he will watch the game and he'll be uh, populated in the top right corner and he'll be critiquing you throughout, um, you know, giving you some things to work on, seeing what you're doing wrong primarily. Um, so if you keep on watching, you'll see the game between uh, myself and Remy and uh, he's doing that critiquing. He's being pretty, pretty harsh to me, but um, it's all fair and to tell you the truth, it made me change my, my techniques. Uh, based on what he says, I, I realized I'm, I'm doing quite a few things wrong, and um, I would just say money well spent. Uh, he charged 25 euros, which worked out to be about 37 dollars Canadian. Uh, his website is bettersquash.com. So again, if you uh, keep on watching, you'll see the example game. Hi Sven and everybody else maybe in Gibson who are watching. So let me explain what's going to happen. This is a live video analysis. It's live because I haven't seen you play. So everything I, I learn from it is the initial impression. We can look at two different things. The first thing that we can look at is the technical aspects, how you're swinging, how you're moving. And those things are, are obviously very important but I often only talk about those things if they are really affecting your game. And that's because I can't work with you. I'm not your coach on call. And knowing what you're doing wrong and how to fix it is a little bit harder than if we talk about the other aspect, which is the tactical, the shot selection, the choices that you make, because that can make an immediate difference. So we'll be looking at both of those areas um, and then at the end, I'll be summarising everything that we have learned. So, let's get started. Here we go. So you're about to receive. Okay, your grip looks good. Okay, racket's a little bit low. Uh, this angle is a bit strange. Now, I know that this is an action camera. I can see from here. So that sometimes distorts everything. You look like you're a little bit too far back. I think I'd like you much further forward. You look tall, so that's another reason for you to be even further forward. So... He's hit the serve, only now are you getting your racket up, and you're very close to that side wall. Okay, it's not a bad return though, okay, but look what's happening, you're kind of... Let's finish this rally. You've got lots of little steps going on. Gosh, we've got a lot going on here. Look, all right, I just want to highlight that very quickly. Look how far back you are. Okay, that's quite nice. Oh, get out of the way. All right, good. Play through the interference. All right, so this is a long first rally, and you're just doing all of the work. Right, so let's go right back to the beginning. So, service return. Let's look at this. Now, we need to look at your wrist. I mentioned that I don't really like talking about technical things because they can be really difficult to fix. I can't fix them on a video. Simply me telling you what's wrong is just one small part. You actually have to do the work and you generally do that with a coach or you can do it on your own, but it's hard work. You see how you've got your wrist here? All right, we need to have what we normally say is cocked. I should have had a racket with me, God damn it. Um, but, and what happens is you, you then do this and this is not the strong way. This is not what professionals do. Professionals do this, which is using the forearm to hit the ball. So that would be an area of concern. However, it might not limit you as much. But the first thing I want to see is what happens with the ball. It's not a bad cross court, but you are staring at it. You are making the classic mistake of hitting and watching. You are moving, but you're not moving as fast as you could be. Now, where are you when he hits it? You are way back. You need to be on the tee. You need to be intimidating him with your size. And I mean that in a positive sense, not in a negative way. He needs to be worried that you're on the tee before he's even hit the ball. Now, he, very kindly, hits it back to you. Why does he do that? Well, it's because after he's hit the ball, he's moved forward. If he hits it straight and you were close to him, it could have been a stroke. So he's forced to hit cross-court. 
And fortunately, because you hadn't moved that much, it comes back to you. Playing off the wrong foot? Okay, I don't mind about that. What do you do with it? Well, it catches the side wall, and then he's in the middle. Now, you're moving forward. You've got a bit of a split step. I love that. Split step is the little jump that you do just before your opponent hits the ball. He's looking up, and he hits it straight. Okay, another bend of that wrist. This is going to be a big thing. Okay, this time you get it tight, and you are... Yeah, but look what you've done. We're going to jump a little bit. It's really hard for me to move a little bit, right? You see how you stayed so far back? You are on that blue uh, checkered line. You, you can't be there. You've got to be almost on the solid blue line up there. Because if he hits a boast, you are so far back. Yes, it could be the camera angle, but I don't think so. Yes, you might be super fast with your strong, long legs, but that's not the point. He hits it cross court, which you might have been able to have volleyed if you'd have been further forward. Look where he is when you make contact with the ball. He's much further forward, good split step. You hit it down the middle, he takes a simple step forward. He boasts, and now look where you were when he hits it. Immediately, one rally. I literally could just do these analyses just from one rally sometimes. You're hanging back, and even if you get to the ball, which you do, you're going to be struggling to get it. Now, this is a defensive situation. You are rushed, you are under pressure. What do you do? You play a good shot. I like it. It's a good shot. It's down the wall, it's a push. You're not trying to hit it too hard. I'm happy with that shot, Sven. You get back to the tee, he's making contact, he hits it quite hard, you take one. Now, what I'm really interested in seeing here is I'm interested in seeing you hit the ball straight. Although if you do choose something else, I'm not going to be too unhappy. But I'm interested in seeing you hit the ball straight and taking one step back. I suspect, and I can't remember, I'm not that, <laughs> not that intelligent, I can't remember, but I suspect you might hit a cross court, and that left leg is going to come really far forward. Okay, see how you twisted? You've now taken yourself off the tee, and you're now behind where you should be. Okay, you're more or less on the tee. I'd like you a bit further forward. Look at the wrist again. Okay. Watch your follow. Look, the fact that we you see how you've, you're still moving into that corner. It's not a bad shot though. Really like that. Your movement now is good. You're getting to the team much. You're getting much further forward. He hits it. All right, and you bump into him. However, by bumping into him, you should have been able to go in front of him. Okay, because look how he's coming back. He's expecting you to be further forward. He's expecting you to do what you should be doing, which is getting in front of him. Um, and now, it, it's one of those things. Nobody's at fault here. It's not a dangerous situation, so don't think I'm suggesting that. But it highlights the fact that you weren't as far forward as you should have been, and you should have been getting in front of him with the option of a volley. But that's impossible now. Okay, it happens. All right, now, you've got to hang back here. I recognise that. You've got to hang back. You can't get to the tee because you'll be in his way. He hits it into the corner. It's, it's a nice shot. You're here. Now, what are you going to do with it? Go straight. Good. Now, look. It's halfway down the wall, and you're still watching. Now you're starting moving. You're watching good, but you're a little bit slow getting there. He's boasted. You're now under pressure. You're moving. This is defence here, Sven. Defence, defence, defence. If you are not thinking about giving yourself time, you're not thinking clearly. All right. And then look where you finish. Left leg comes forward again. You couldn't have hit it straight because you'd have been in the way. Great rally, by the way. And his boast was fantastic. Don't feel bad that you lost that point. Second bounce in the nick is a really good boast. Tough first rally. So should we summarise, even immediately? The first thing is your movement off the ball. I really like to see a little bit further, uh, faster reaction. Hit and move, hit and move. You know, just like Muhammad Ali, you know, hit and move, you know, uh, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, in and out, in and out. You're not far enough forward on the tee. Now, that's so unfair of me to say that. 
You've only seen one rally, Philip. How, how can you be fair? Well, is what I see. What could be the reason for that? Well, it could be that you're not comfortable in the back corners. It could be that because of this wrist, you don't feel that you can get the ball out of the back corner. So what do you do? You stand back a little bit more because you feel a bit more success. You're actually quite fast. I can get to the front, so maybe my tee should be a little bit further, further back. Well, what you're doing is you're adapting your weaknesses instead of overcoming those weaknesses. And the solution for that would be to spend a bit more time working on your, your wrist and your back corner shots and use your advantage. What's your advantage? You look like a big guy. Get in on the tee and start volleying those balls and cutting the balls off. That would be my initial impression after one rally. So, let's see what happens. See if I made a fool of myself when it's completely opposite. Right. Oh, but, oh, oh, actually, oh. I just realised I'm still... OK, the previous analysis that I just did... Ah, silly me. Sorry, Sven. The previous analysis that I just did uh, was too far away, so I had to I had to uh, bring the camera in, and I've realised it's set up the same. So my apologies. So now we get a bit of you. doesn't change anything I've said, though. So. This, you told me this already, uh, and it's clear. You're, this opponent is much better than you. His technique is much better, and he's therefore putting you under a lot more pressure. Well done. Yeah, that's a nice shot. All right, it's super bad, isn't it? All right, you are under a lot of pressure in this rally. So let's uh, let's watch it again. It's a long one. Right. All right. Okay. So, here we go. He's about to serve. He, definitely not happy with your grip. You've got to sort of... See how your racket face is closed? Closed means that the side that you're going to make contact with the ball is facing down. All right, and I know you've got plenty of time to change that, but it should be open. It should be open. And you're, you're here, and you're moving backwards, and I would like you to have volleyed that up there, but you can't because your racket's low. It's now pushing you in the corner... The side that you're about to make contact with the ball, the face, the racket face, the side of the strings is facing down. And you've got time to change that, but you hit it and you hit it low. And that is the consequence of having a close racket face. He's now here. Now look at his racket. We can learn from opponents. He's got that 90 degrees between his forearm and his racket frame. And he's moving it just slightly, getting the balance right, and there he pushes you right into the corner. You've gone short again, not on purpose, I know. Another short one. It's not a bad shot if you're on the tee, but you're not on the tee. Comes back to what I said in the first rally, recognising that you are under pressure. You're under pressure here. This shot should be high. Where does it hit? It hits halfway between the service line and the tin. This is not a defensive shot. This is an attacking shot, but you're not in an attacking position. He's perfectly placed on the tee. You're stuck in the corner. He hits it. Uh, you hit it quite short. Now, let me be clear. Your shot is quite good, but not for the situation. If you were in front of him, if he was, if he was like way at the front, that's a good shot. It's going second bounce close to the corner but you weren't in front of him, you were behind him, he's about to hit it, you are two steps away from the tee, he thankfully, thanks very much Mr Black Shorts, he hits it back to you, yeah, it's okay though, he hasn't made a mistake or anything, alright, and then he's about to boast it, and then you get there, well done, okay, uh, you did your best, I can't complain to that, now this is defence spent, his defence because he's got you from corner to corner are you going to hit it high yes ok and it just ok you were a little a little bit unlucky just caught the side wall it came out he volleyed and you're in trouble you um, didn't do anything wrong in that last well, not last point that last moment that last shot you tried to go defence right, look where your racket is look where your racket is now it's up but now the ball's on you and you're back. He's pushed you into the corner. Look where you are. Look, you're standing there watching him. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Get a bit, a bit further forward at least. Look at that racket. So, 
another thing that I'm seeing here is very late racket preparation. Now, we often see that in, in pros, but they're pros. They're on court for like six hours a day, every day. They're much better at judging how the ball is going to react. In your case, you're forcing yourself to play when the ball's very deep because you're not able to take it early because your racket's not ready. That's a great shot, but what did you do after you hit it? Boom. Watching, watching, watching. Look where you're going. You're getting really close to the wall. You should be on the tee. He hit a tin with it, but question I'm asking myself, Sven, would you have got it even if it had been if it had been up? And if you would have got it, would you have been in a good position? Okay. So, here's the question. Why are you serving forehand? Why wouldn't I, Philip? Well, Serving backhand allows you to be looking at your opponent so they can't surprise you. It allows you to be stepping forward after you've hit the ball. It allows you to make a very good serve that hits a sidewall. It's possible to hit some great serves on your forehand. But what's about to happen is you're about to hit the ball and move slightly away from the tee. It's almost as if you have an aversion to getting to the tee. So now you've hit it, you're watching, you're turning... The ball has passed the, the half-court line, which is the line on the floor. It's a high shot, it's too high, but you're not even on the tee. If he'd have volleyed this, you'd have been away from the tee. He has to let it bounce because it's so high. Yes, you're on the tee now, but it's taken too long to get there. He is it deep. And then he's, pu he's pushing you under. Oh, it's too low. Right. Notice how your swing, your racket is waiting, so it gets you into the corner, and it's only at the last minute that the racket comes up, has no time to wait. He's going to do it again, I think. Right, now look at your racket, look at your racket. Damn it, damn it. Sorry, I tried to pause it. Here we go. All right, so look at your racket, look at your racket. The ball has bounced, and the racket's on the floor. Literally, it's not up there. It's down low. A better player's going to have the racket up here. If it takes a strange bounce, he only has to move forward to the ball. You have to come back and then go forward. And then it's right in the corner. Got no time. I'll be honest with you. Well, I'm being honest. But what I want to say here about the video analysis is that, that this, this match where matches where players are much better than the other, they seem like the best matches, but they're not always the best matches because you are always under pressure. And it's not always a fair reflection of your game. Uh, so in future, the closer the players are, as long as you know it's an interesting match, the better. Imagine if you played a pro. Let's take it to the extreme. Imagine if you played a pro. You might say to me, Flip, that's got to be the perfect, perfect video for you to analyse. It's not, because you're under pressure all of the time, and it's not fair. It's, I'm not getting to see any of the good things that you're doing uh, that we want to talk about. So... Bear that in mind for future. All right, 3-1. Here we go. See how he's served. See how he's looking at you just before he served. He's now on the tee as you hit it. So we can learn from that. Another time that you watched, Sven, you're in the corner. Racket face is facing down. I need to see it up earlier and with an open face. It's a good cross court. I like that. Maybe a bit hard, but it's wide. Okay. All right, see the wrist again. Now watch what you do. You're going to move and keep going forward. He's going to get in front of you. Ideally, what should be happening is that you hit it and go straight back to the tee, and he has to come behind you. And there he goes. You're behind the tee. He's volleying. And look where you are again. You should be much further forward. He's boasting. And he hit the tin. But you'd have been struggling to get it again. Now, oh, you were about to serve back end. Good. The the score it is not a, ref, a fair reflection because the two points that you've got have been two tins that he hit that you didn't force him to hit. Now, this could easily be 5-0. All right, good. I like that. You're going too far forward, though. Okay. Now, you don't look very comfortable. 
and lots of people are not comfortable when they're serving back end, and that's okay because it's a process. It's a great thing for working on your on your on your back end swing, and I'm happy that you're doing it. Uh, but you sort of stopped. It's got to be a flowing motion, so a little bit more practice. But I'm very happy you did that. Okay, good. You're on the tee. You're on the tee. First time. First time we've had two minutes of gameplay, <laughs> and we've had lots of shots. But it's the first time I really feel that you're on the tee when your opponent is about to hit the ball. And he hits a good cross court, and your movement there is pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. You didn't get your racket up early, so you're going to have to sort of scoop it out of the corner. There you go. Not your fault. He hit a good shot, uh, partly to do with your lack of preparation, but not a huge problem. All right. Now, look at this. Almost as if, uh, as if you're, you're just watching. He's hitting the ball, and you're watching him hit it. And I have to go back, because I want you to watch... I want you to watch how you twist around. So, boom, here. Boom, you can see the twist. Boom, look how big that racket follow-through was. Boom, and then all of that effort, all of your power that you will be able to develop has turned into the twist. It hasn't been put into the ball. You're watching, he's hit it, and then, thank you very much, Mr. Black Shorts, You've hit it back to him. It's fine. He hasn't made a mistake. He's not here to try and win every point in the first shot. But against another player, they might have played it straight and you'd have been in trouble. All right, good. I can see that you're trying to get the ball behind him. Good. You're just standing at the back again. And again, you get it, but you're under pressure. So, your homework is to hit every single service return straight. Oh, but Philip, that's really hard. Yeah, yeah, it is, man. I'm not going to make it easy for you. It, you know, progress comes at a cost, and a cost is that it's difficult sometimes. What that means is that I want you to stand further forward. I want you to start with your racket up before even they even start swinging. And it's just a habit that I want you to get into. I want you to stop using your wrist, and I want you to use your shoulder. Your shoulder is much stronger than your wrist. When you learn to swing properly, you use all of the parts together. But at the moment, I want you to use your shoulder. I want you to block it, and I want you to hit it straight. And I want every single serve to be like that for the next 10 games, because I want you to get into the habit of hitting straight, get them into the corner, because we're not effective enough on our service return. Gonna let some rallies run through a little bit. I'm gonna stop so much. Okay, so very late preparation. He's sticking you in the corner. You're doing your best to get it past him. Okay, good. I like that. Play some soft ones every now and again. Scooping. Good, good. Get to the tee. Good. Okay. Preparation in this case. Your racket was so low that you never had a chance to prepare. Okay, so we've we've found all of the issues that we need to worry about. Now it's just a case of just watching. Okay, it's a great shot, but look where you are. Uh, okay, nearly a stroke. Look where you are. Your feet are flat on the floor. Oh, nice shot. Not sure you meant to play that, but <laughs> nice shot. Okay, good. Serving backhand. I like that. Yeah. Okay, that was out. What a shame. Don't be afraid to practice your serve. Don't be afraid to get on court and just hit some serves. Red dot, just to feel comfortable. Way too hard. Well, you're on the tee, though. Okay. Tight. Well done. Good. I wouldn't have boasted there. He said it tight. Yep. It's diff I, w I wouldn't boast off a boast. Normally, your opponent's got too much time to get in position. Um, so we need to be careful with that. Volley, volley, volley. Okay, good. It's not a bad cross court. It's just not wide enough. Got maybe you told me, but you really look like you play tennis. You've really got like a tennis swing in the sense that it's like the straight arm and you really need that bent arm coming in here. Okay. Yeah, okay, I understand why you went service return there forehand because the last one went out. Yeah, okay, you did your best. 
it's what I was saying earlier on about you know when a player is, is too good for you, pretty much anything you do is going to be wrong because you'll never put them under pressure, right? What you try to do there is you try to hit the ball too hard. Look at the, where that racket's turning. Look at the twist, right? Now I've just noticed you've got like a strap. Should have noticed this earlier. You've got a strap on your arm, so I'm wondering you've got tennis elbow, and I'm wondering if you've got tennis elbow because you're doing a lot of this type of motion. Um, maybe we'll talk about that a bit at the end. Game ball. Let's go back. Watch your movement after this movement here. It's not, it's not bad movement to the ball. You hit it, you twist. See how you twisted? And then all of that effort has gone into the twist. Good. Good shot selection. I like that. Oh, so close. All right. That's the game. All right, so these are the highlights. Interesting to see what you've chosen as highlights. His winner. His winner. That's a great shot. That is a great shot. Okay, so it's basically the highlights here are just at the point. Okay. I'm going to pause it there. I'm going to pause it because I think it's just the points. Interestingly, if if I were to do the highlights, I'd be choosing the shots that you played well, not necessarily the ones that you want points for, uh, from an analysis point of view. Uh, the highlights uh, are a little unfair, or maybe they're not unfair, maybe they're really high, they really focus on the, the difference. All right, so the summary here, Sven. The summary is until you start stopping this, start stopping it, until you stop doing this, you're not going to have much success in the back left-hand corner. Until you stop having a straight arm, you're not going to have much success in the right hand for corner. We, I talked about right at the beginning the difference between tactics and technique. In this particular case, your technique is limiting you more than anything else. You need to address your swing and that will open up a new world for you. Uh, it's not going to be easy. I won't sort of sugarcoat it. It's going to be hard work. Changing swing after a long time is difficult, especially if you've been a tennis player and you're accustomed to this kind of, you know, coming over the top. You're really going to have to work on that. From a, um, a tactical point of view, generally you're playing the right kind of shots. You're playing lots of straight shots. I like that. I, I'm, I'm happy with that. You recognise a, a shot to play short. I'm very happy about that. Um, but if you don't have the ability to play the right shots, then that's always going to be limiting. Even if you know I've got to play the shot straight here, but you can't, then that, that's no good. So that's why the, the technical side is so important for you. Uh, your movement to the ball is pretty good. It's pretty good. It's not perfect. Nobody's is perfect. It's pretty good. What happens the moment you make contact with the ball, though, is our problem. There's too much twist. Again, that could be because of the tennis. Not only that, you're not getting to the tee, you're hitting. I don't mean to be rude when I do that, but let's literally, we can just take some screenshots and you're literally just staring at the ball. It's a move. You've got to get further forward. But I'm not getting further forward, Philip, because when I do, I've got even less chance of getting the ball out of the back. I know. I understand what you're saying. And I mentioned that in the analysis, that there's a good chance that that's why you're not going back. Because if you go too far forward then when you try to get in the corner, you've got even less chance. But you've got to do what's right, not what's easy. And it's easy to hang back, but it's not the right thing to do. Uh, and that homework that I gave you about serving service returns, I want you to work through that. Now, how does, how, how does my analysis now help you? Well, you know what you're doing wrong, but you've got to fix it. And fixing it in, in this particular case is generally with a coach because you need somebody to be working on that swing. It's hard to do technique unless you've reached a, a fairly high level. It's hard to do technique on your own, so you really need to work on that. No matter how fit you get, no matter how fast you are, no matter how hard you can hit the ball, your technique will always be limiting you because of the back walls. 
In other sports, we don't have that back wall, but in squash we do. And if you can't get the ball out of the back corner, that is going to be the fundamental thing for you. If you've got any questions or doubts, or if you want to argue against me, and I'm okay with that, and justify why you're doing things, I'm okay with that too. Just let me know in an email and I'll respond. And as always, if you've seen any of my videos, do something every single day to improve your squash. And in your case, it would be a little bit of ghosting so that you get on court, swing, pretend to hit the ball and move back to the tee immediately all the way. And something called shadow swings, which is where you swing without the ball so that you, you are training your body to have the correct technique without having to worry about the result, which is hitting the ball. So those things, I've, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link to a video in the email for you about shadow swings. Um, and ghosting is really just a case of just moving around, but not worrying about how fast you do it, worrying about swinging and moving back to the tee, split step, which is that little jump, and then the next one. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And remember, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya.